I don't get your third party because I read your website and it's a bunch of mush. <coughs> it, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying it's not like specific. It doesn't even mention this. And, and why start a third party, which is a long shot anyway, if you're not going to be bold and what? Oh, I'd love to dig into this. Please so, do. Yeah. So what I determined was that our current political system is not going to address poverty or climate change or polarization unless you actually fix the incentives. And it was a, a U.S. senator who said this to me, and everyone needs to understand this. She said, we're at a point in American life where an issue is worth more to us unaddressed than addressed. Because if I lean forward to solve the problem, what happens? I get, I get beat up by my base, my job security goes down, I get attacked. Right. So we're in a no compromise zone. So if you wanted to, let's say, uh, alleviate poverty in America, you have to fix our democratic system. This two party system is not designed to deliver solutions. I, I just have to say, <laughs> okay, but again, that's. I, I just have to say, so I, I'm not 100% sure how a different party, I mean, you have to explain how that's going to change the whole system. But here's the thing if you have a senator, as someone who's running for Senate, if you have a senator who's saying, if you have a senator saying the incentives are wrong, so I can't do the right thing, that's the problem, not the fact that we need another party. It's that you have people who won't take risks. You have people who are going to put their reelection over anything else who are worried from a, a primary from their left or for right, yep. 100%. But if you put people who are brave in those places, if you put people who are saying like, look, if I don't win my next election, no one dies. I can go on. I'll find another job. Then you actually see the incentives change because then they want to do the right thing. That is part of why our government doesn't work. It sometimes is people. So look, look, Alyssa, first... You can tell this lady's running for Senate because she won't just say, yeah, there's a fucking ton of money in this game, bro. And uh, you got to make sure that you don't upset the levels of power. Otherwise, you are fucked. You are not going to be able to win re-election. You are going to be oust by the people that you need to donate millions of dollars to you if you want to win a statewide Senate election in basically any state. Um, I, I love what you're saying, but there was a guy in Michigan who bravely voted to impeach Donald Trump mm -hmm. at great personal risk, Peter Meyer. And he lost his seat in part because Democrats boosted his extremist challenger because that challenger is going to be easier to beat in the general. We have an incentive system right now. If you step up like Peter did or Adam Kinzinger or Liz Cheney, you're out of there. And so there are people that see this and say, OK, I it, it's so obvious, too, that what Andrew Yang is channeling now and who he's pandering to, it's really just the Lincoln Project type neocons that are anti-Trump. Um, that's always what he goes back to. Are people like Liz Cheney great holding up people like Liz fucking Cheney, uh, because she was anti-Trump. It's like nothing to do with policy. No, no mention of their actual political ideology and what kind of votes they cast impeaching Donald Trump. Well, obviously the correct thing to do is not a policy matter. This is not legislation voting yes or no on Donald Trump's fucking impeachment has literally nothing to do with actual policy or legislation. It's just about Trump and who's in power. And that's what this guy's whole brand is about. Just like with the Lincoln project, the Lincoln project does not, you know, try to try to push forward a progressive agenda or like a, you know, socialist agenda for the left. No, all they care about is dunking on Trump and, and talking about how the Republican party was so great before Trump and how the, you know, few Republicans left that don't support Trump, how they're the fucking paragons of virtue. Same shtick from Andrew Yang. Oh, 100%, because he refuses to identify the real problem in this country, which is capitalism, right? Uh, that's always been the big problem for Andrew Yang, uh, is that he he wants to, you know, have, like, he, he, he thinks we can, like, innovate our way out of this with, like, venture capital and shit like that, and that's just never going to happen, because that is the, you know, uh, you know, the sickness can't be the cure kind of a deal. I get it, but the way out is to do what they did in Alaska, which is why Lisa Murkowski is the only Republican senator who voted to impeach Donald Trump, who made it back uh, and was up for re-election in 22. You know why? Because they got rid of the party primaries in Alaska. That's why Sarah Palin lost to Mary Peltola. That's why Lisa Murkowski beat Kelly Shabaka, the Trump-endorsed loony, who would have beaten her in a, a Republican primary. You get. And by the way, ranked choice voting is super based. We've talked about it and advocated for it a million times on the Vanguard, but you can start an organization that advocates for advancing ranked choice voting. You can advocate for ranked choice voting as a policy without starting this dumb fucking forward party bullshit. Like your, your party, your forward party has nothing to do with ranked choice voting. You're actually distracting from the one thing that actually would help this country in creating the forward party. Just start an initiative 
to support ranked choice voting. The forward party is meaningless. Yeah, I was going to say that would have actually been a solid use of his time. That would have been something that I would have at least, you know, say, hey, that's at least admirable, right? Like this, you know, he's he's trying to bring more democracy. That's what we always tell people about ranked choice voting. Do you want to have more democracy? Do you want to alleviate that feeling where you're like, well, I, I feel like I don't want to risk this other person you know, winning, but I, I really like this person the best. That opens the door for way more lefties to get in there uh, because the, it kind of undermines the number one Democrat talking point, which is like, oh, you really need to vote against this person, not not ever for them. And as soon as there's an option for somebody who is not the other person and actually stands for good things, it's like, well, that's the obvious choice, not their guy. Uh, so it kind of takes away their, you know, you know, superpower rid of the primaries, you fix the incentives, and that's what the forward party is designed to do. I, I just say, okay. I would just say that I think it's, it's one thing to have that conversation at a state level, and I'm not against having that, that kind of primary, right? There's not a different, a different party there. There's not a third party that they're part of. It's a different primary system. But when you're talking about a third party, like I like math, right? And I want to make sure Me that too. if we have a third party, <laughs> yeah, that if we have a third party, that it's not going to be handing the country over to people who are extreme, who have fascist leanings. Like, I want to make sure that we, we do. I'm not the last person to say that the Democratic Party is perfect. Trust me. But I'm just concerned that a third party means we're handing the party, the, the country over to people who do not have good intentions for democracy. What did I tell you? I'd always and what about the issue, though? I mean, don't, if you're going to start the third party, don't you at least have to have one major issue? And I thought you had one. The, the, this UBI thing, universal basic income. Everybody gets free money. Whether you believe it or not, it's an idea. LOL. I thought you had your thing, Andrew. You bit. What do you do? What did I tell you? What did I tell you, Andrew? We 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 smoked a cigar. We had some scotch. You know, we were at the the eyes wide shut house. You remember? Come on. I, I said I said stick to your brand. You got the math and you got the UBI. Come on, Andrew. Like I've been in this show business for forty fucking years. You want to learn from the best? All right. Take your mask off. You're you know wipe your eyes. You're crying. No. I, 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 <laughs> that's funny because apparently bill maher does have some weird like sex orgy parties oh or dude he was something. a regular he was a main stay at the playboy mansion while hugh hefner lived there i main. you can read some insane shit about bill maher it's like the one thing i kind of respect about the guy i'm like yeah you didn't give a fuck you were like yeah i'm famous and i'm using it to fuck i'm like all right dude that's your deal that's your deal like everybody's got a deal you know uh and that's his uh he, he likes to go to the fucking playboy mansion and fuck people that's all right um uh, you know the 90s right yeah he's like still proudly unmarried too he's like i just don't see the point like i've never been in a relationship that lasts long enough for me to feel like it was warranted so yeah i, I do kind of fuck with that element of bill maher too it's funny but honestly bill maher makes a great point there um which is like you have this forward party you're you're talking about democracy and extremism yada 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 but like what how is your party actually going to accomplish that and furthermore if you're you can you can run on those ideas within the democrat party within the republican party or as an independent what the fuck is the point of creating a whole new party especially if it has no platform and it's not even centered around the one policy idea that you actually did contribute to the discussion bring to the table that being universal basic income an idea by the way that i happen to massively support i'm a huge supporter of ubi um it's, it's the reason why for a while i actually did give andrew gang the benefit of the doubt and for a while when he was running in 2020 i was like hell you know th this guy's actually you know bringing something to the conversation here unlike amy klobuchar john delaney any of these fucking fools at least andrew gang had something to contribute to the conversation policy wise and that was universal basic income but now his fucking policy platform, we've showed this a million times just because it's so fucking funny. Uh, but if you look at the forward party platform, I mean, this makes Amy Klobuchar look like a fucking policy wonk. This makes Pete Buttigieg and all these corporate Kamala. shills. Yeah, Kamala. It makes them seem like serious, substantive, policy-focused people. This is a fucking joke. It's a parody of enlightened centrism. I mean, look at this platform. Free people thriving communities vibrant democracy anyone across the entire political spectrum would say they're in favor of these things whether you're a right winger a fucking bleeding heart liberal or an independent no matter where you are everyone says they believe in these things anyone running for office says they support these things this is a fucking joke it's so unspecific and to not even have ubi as a litmus test i mean they don't even have ranked choice voting as a litmus test they, they don't even say we're only going to support candidates that We'll fight for ranked choice voting. There is nothing 
Yeah, it, it, it's 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 hilarious. It it really is a bummer, but it's also proof that it, thank God for the internet, right? You cannot run on this vapid bullshit anymore. People will pretend that you still can, and they'll try and d- dismiss Donald Trump uh, as being an example of how that could happen. I will show you two different elections, twenty sixteen. I, there was no bigger hater of Donald Trump than me, right? Ga- like we were not Donald Trump people at all. I could say that I know I knew Gavin. Gavin knew me. Not we both were fucking firmly anti Donald Trump. Like it was never a question. We were never ever 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 going to say anything nice about him. He it represents everything I loathe and despise. Okay, clearing the air there. I have to say he actually had a little bit of a campaign platform in 2016. He had way better advisors. And honestly, you got, I, like, I don't want to give it up to Steve Bannon. You don't got to give it up to Steve Bannon. But the guy understood that you had to run on something that the American people cared about. He understood how uh, if he wanted to turn Donald Trump in from take Donald Trump and take him from being an out of touch billionaire, uh, right, uh, who these people knew and respected as like a, a powerful man, but, you know, had no policy platform, make him relatable in some capacity. He had to start talking about NAFTA and and, and uh, Trump excelled because he knew how to go after Hillary. He was like, crooked Hillary? Yeah, just make sure you start talking about how her husband gave away jobs in NAFTA and how we're going to bring him home. How are you going to bring him home? That's for us to figure out when we get office. Probably we'll just fuck off and, and hang out anyway. But but we're trying to get elected. You know, that's not, not our problem, right? You know, the car doesn't have to run. You just have to sell it, right? That was the whole idea. You know, start talking about the wars. You know, yeah, we're, we're going to have to keep stay in the wars because, you know, that's how we make our money. But don't, don't you worry. The Saudis would be pissed if we fucked that up. But don't worry. They know we're just winning the election. Just, just say whatever the fuck you want. Go after these guys. Go ham. Talk about how fucking uh, Obama was the fucking uh, drone commander in chief or you know the dr- droner in chief or whatever the fuck uh things all that all that jazz he had a platform he had a he had issues that people cared about they cared about their jobs being overseas they cared about the fact that they couldn't fucking pay their rent they cared about the fact that they used to have a fucking house they owned and then the 2008 financial crash that was stolen from them and obama bailed out the banks and not them trump took all of that and he you know distilled it down into a lot of you know cloaked it in a lot of racism too uh that bigotry all that kind of shit dog whistles 2020 he made it all about trump he made it all about how they're you know look at me like america the, keep america great like you know there is no covid19 all this kind of shit right not a message that was relatable to the american people you can't run on foo-foo bullshit you can't run on platitudes anymore people have the internet they can google this shit they can figure it out they know uh enough they, they might not have the biggest media literacy but they can find out if you're if you're gonna say anything right people can detect word salad they can detect it better than um most things, right? They, they just know if you're just telling, oh, I support good things and I oppose bad things. It's like, that's not good enough. What good things do you support, um, right? We haven't quite crossed the threshold where, you know, we need them to do it and execute it, uh, right? But, he, you know, Donald Trump in 2016, he's particularly could lean on the fact that he'd never ha- cast a bad vote. He'd never cast a bad vote. There was nothing that they could hold his feet to because he hadn't actually done anything in office. And, you know, so we'll see how that affects him uh, in 2024. Um, you know, we'll also be, you know, talking about his arrest tomorrow a little bit, I imagine uh, how that will impact him in 2024. But all that said is you actually need a campaign of issues, right? Uh, You need to run on issues. And I think Bernie Sanders did a lot to make that a necessity uh, in the Democratic Party. Unfortunately, Joe Biden, you know, he had issues. He also just fucked them all off as soon as he got elected, right? Uh, He said a bunch of things. No more drilling on fucking uh public land he said that absolutely not no 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 right whatever the fuck that clip is that's going around well he changed his mind about that 15 dollars minimum wage he changed his mind about that uh doing a meaningful infrastructure bill he changed his mind about that uh he just wanted a half measure all that kind of shit but anyway you have to have something you have to have something uh unless you and your opponent are both offering nothing which i think might be the option in 2024 but i digress